When I was in my early 20s, I'm 30 now, I was going to get my master's in business, you know, like I should. And I was like, screw that. I'm not getting my master's in business. I'm going to become a master gambler because I'm going to change the world and I need money to do it. So this is my story about how that occurred and what I did to do that. The last time I was in Las Vegas at the Bellagio, I won $54,250. Four hours later, I was in jail. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how that happened. And this is all true. I ran a team based out of Cincinnati, and this is what we're about. So before I get into this, there's some absolute principles. My Uncle Steve used to t teach me that we've got to be strategic people. When everyone is doing the same thing, in my mind, we need to stop <laughs> and look for a new angle. So when there's fat in the market, we want to be the kind of people who find it, evaluate it, and capitalize on it. So my story is one that was based off of this guy, Stanford Wong. Now I'm going to equip you with just kind of the premise of card counting and how to do blackjack. So this dude in the 70s is kind of like wrote the Bible for how to properly gamble using mathematics. Um, so when we started this thing, it was 30 of us based out of Seattle and Cincinnati. This is a documentary called Holy Rollers they made on us because we made... I don't know, a few million playing blackjack and beating the game mathematically. So that's on Netflix or whatever if you want to see it. Holy rollers. Uh, my story in this thing is training, training, training. So this is what I'm going to talk about. First things. This is called basic strategy. This is provided by every casino. It's just enough information for you to consistently lose. So that's, that's what they will give you. If you want to learn how to count cards like I've done, you have to memorize this chart. And you're guaranteed to lose all the time. Our obsession is looking for the face cards, right? So when you're evaluating value in the game of blackjack mathematically, all systems are bent towards finding out where these things live within the shoe that the dealer lays out. To do so, we have to assign values to cards and track them. It's called the high-low system. So what we do is we give a value to each card and then we track its location within the shoe, the shoe being what the dealer has to give out. So low cards are given a value, medium cards this, and the high cards are given a value. But my numbers got switched somehow. Um, by the way, this is all on Google, not on Yahoo. So here's how we do it. <laughs> when the cards get laid out, you count a value for every single card in the house. The dealer's card, the other people's cards, your cards. So this is two, and then a five, two, and three is another three, and then a pair of face cards is a negative two. You add that up together, and it gives you this thing called a running count. So now you take your running count, you divide it. This is really simple math. You divide it with the amount of decks remaining. This tells you exactly where, mathematically, the face cards live, and then what your percentage opportunity is to do something with it. At that point, we do what I love to say, is we go Wu-Tang on it. <laughs> what I mean by that is, when every other player at the table, and I've never gambled before, all I've ever done is card counting. But when everybody else says stand, we know mathematically that we should hit. When everyone says hit, we know we should double. <laughs> there are opportunities when you're dealt 21s, and you should double them. And you make a ton of money doing it, but you have to learn how to evaluate the market. My last point in this thing is, with everything else, you've got to hone a skill. So I've trained tons and tons and tons of card counters, and people who are gamblers don't get it. People who understand logic do. If you hone the skill, you practice it, there's an awesome opportunity to make money through mathematics and gambling. Um, next point, you've got to get a bankroll. If you become a card counter like I was, and this is how I started my company, I funded it like this, you invariably will look like a drug dealer. And when I got stopped in Detroit for having 100K in my pocket, it was really awkward with the FDA. Um, I always say this though, once you get a bankroll, you've got to plan out your finances. We got audited by the IRS four years ago. That's really weird to run a card counting team and getting audited. But we had to prove our finances and keep them in check and make sure we don't lose our money. Now, from blackjack, from a moral perspective, is it illegal? No. A wise man once said, it's frowned upon. Like, well, you can imagine what the quote finishes. No, blackjack is not illegal. It's completely legal. All you're doing is learning how to look at what you're seeing. Everyone else sees gambling. You see math. And when you see that and you can understand how to evaluate it properly, you know what to do. That being said, I have literally been kicked out of every casino on the earth. And that is not literal. <laughs> I've been backed out of every place. Casinos are private institutions. They love for you to come in and say you can win. And as soon as you can win, they kick you out. <laughs> so if, in fact, you said, man, I want to do this thing, I will tell you this. You will be backed off. If you go to Horseshoe and you know how to make money, Horseshoe will kick you out as quickly as they can. I actually am afraid to go in there because I know I'll get arrested. That being said, 
Every, every blackjack player knows this. You've got to be like Sherlock Holmes. Master of psychology, dude completely understands people's expectations and what they think they see, and he knows how to swerve in right underneath of them. So my last time in Vegas, again, I ended up in jail, <laughs> I decided to go incognito. So my standard opportunity was I would dress like this, and that chain and that ring were from the, or from the costume store. <laughs> and then underneath of that outfit, as soon as I would see that the heat's coming from the casino, I'd go in the bathroom, and I'd take it all off, and I'd have my little J. Crew outfit on underneath of it, and walk back out and start moving more money. Um, so my point is this, and this is the presentation I gave last night. I'm a firm believer in strategy, looking for opportunity, and nail that sucker down. And if you do it in any market, in anything, there's a heck of a lot of success. As it turns out, my path led me to gambling, which ultimately allowed me to run my startup that I have right now. And that is my story in a nutshell. Um, now here, let me self-promo. Torch prep, which does not apply to any of you. Uh, what we did is I took the exact same pr premise of blackjack, the way we train, the way we strategize, the way we look for opportunities, the way we drill down. And now we run this for high school kids, not for gambling, <laughs> all over the city in regards to education and the ACT standardized testing. So we do the exact same principle, but we're using it to break the colleges. So I look at colleges the same way I look like casinos. They look really fun, <laughs> and they want to take all your money. So our perspective is, what are we going to do across our city to better not just ourselves, not to just be profitable, which we have to be, but what are we going to actually do to make this city a better and redder place, not only for these kids in all the private schools, but working down in the slums as well? How are we resourcing people who don't have that once we provide for them, we actually see change coming across our city, across our region? Um, yeah, that's our passion. And, that's kind of what I'm about. So do we want to do a Q&A? That, was that something? Yeah. So a lot of people want to talk to me about gambling. If you want to ask some questions, I'd love to answer them. And questions? Yes. What do you do with a continuous shoe? What, you don't play a, what do you do with a continuous shoe? You get away from it. <laughs> so don't come near that thing at all. Continuous shoe is an unbeatable game, <laughs> unless you cheat, and that will get you arrested. So don't do that one. Question? Bringing Down the House is a great book. I've read it probably 500 times backwards, upside down, on a Pilates bar. Yeah, it's, it's an outstanding text and highly recommended. Uh, other questions? Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, is, is it just as simple? You know, you get the plus one, minus one, you get your net count and all that, and you just need a lot of money over time. Do you, do you play basic strategy, or when do you change from basic strategy? Yeah, so it, it's blackjack, and it's... And it's form is super simple mathematics, ultra simple mathematics. Um, it is literally assigning a value to cards, counting them just as I showed, and running that simple equation, running count divided by decks remaining. Now there's a series of 21 to 25 deviations from a basic strategy chart that'll tell you what to do. Here's the deal though. When you start putting all of your savings on the table <laughs> and you're losing it and losing it and losing it, this is called variance, mathematic variance, <laughs> your hands start shaking, and then you're like, I am actually, I think I just sharded because <laughs> I just lost $25,000 playing perfect, perfect strategy. Uh, what it takes is stoicness. And I'm a real firm believer, and th it, this is literally what freaks people out. There's two things. Number one, when they start losing, and then number two, social pressure. In blackjack, now, people don't understand the way math works, generally speaking. But in the game of blackjack, we as professionals and mathematicians, we go the way we know the math says to go. And people freak out on you for this. They get really frustrated. They're like, oh, you, you broke my luck. And you're like, no, oh, you just need to use your brain. Uh, <laughs> so it, may, it actually is a very, very simple process. I've trained probably 40 or 50 people in the last few years. Most of them, it's just a game of memorization and making yourself do it. When I learned how to count cards, I went to my college's library and I locked myself in there for 40 days, 10 hours a day. I was like, I'm not leaving this place. And I never went to a casino. I went to Wikipedia. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not leaving until I've absolutely mastered it. The next day I flew to Seattle and started my career. And it was a kind of a bumpy ride, but pretty fun. Cool, any other questions? Yes. You said you're from Cincy, but I'm sensing some South Jersey. Accent, no? Uh, the only thing that's ever happened to me in South Jersey was some guy tearing my shoulder, but <laughs> no, no South Jersey in me, man. How did you pick that up? 
What? How'd you pick that up? I work with a lot of people from South Jersey. Oh, my South Jersey accent came from a lot of Jersey Shores. Okay. I'm just kidding. I don't even own a television. <laughs> never watched that show. Cool. Uh, anything else for me? Want to know the worst thing I've ever done and never told anyone? If gambling's not illegal, then why do you leave in handcuffs? Well, all right. So here's the deal. Check the situation out. I flew to Las Vegas to train a guy from San Diego on how to play this game. So it's a pretty fun hourly rate. It's like 200 bucks an hour for training. So I fly to, this, fly to the city, play with this guy. I'm like, well, I'm going to play a little bit. Um, I actually was at the win. I was down $20,000. Now, blackjack is completely legal. In New Jersey, it's against the law to discriminate against card counters. But in, in Vegas, I'm playing, and we call it heat. And that's when you see these guys in these fancy suits, which to you guys, they look like just normal people. And to us, we're like, oh, man. <laughs> so we call it heat. And I'm like, man, it's getting really sweaty in here. And I see like a whole brigade of them coming at me. So I, like, I grab my chips. I'm like, well, I better start going. And these dudes start chasing me. I've got this horrible fight or flight instinct. I've flight from animals and fight from humans. But uh, in this case, I'm like, there's 30 of them. So I just started running. And this guy, I'm out of, outside of the wind. And I'm like, please, Mark, just get to the strip. And I'm really tall, which is my excuse for being incredibly uncoordinated. <laughs> so I'm like running. And some dude goes Wu-Tang monkey and jumps on my back and just starts screaming at me. So I call the police. And I'm like, I just got assaulted. They're like, they're like handcuffing me, you know, like hog tying me, come quickly. Because I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting detained against my will. I call the police, the police come. But the question is, how does the Clark County Police Department get paid? <laughs> oh, by the casinos. <laughs> so they came and arrested me and put me in jail, which was one of the best experiences of my life, because I was sober as can be, and there was just a huge heroin sting. So I was like, man, all these cool people I get to meet and like hang out in jail. Um, <laughs> But they, they took, it was really awkward, because I, I think I had like 84K in my pockets. So like they had to like itemize each dollar bill. <laughs> and I was like, I'm really not a drug dealer, guys. I'm, it's OK. They didn't believe me. Um, but yeah, I went back to jail. I went back to Las Vegas two months later for my court date. I'd never been to court, but I was like, I'm not hiring a lawyer. I'm going to Google it. Uh, <laughs> so I Googled it. I was like, I have no idea how to defend myself against a citizen's arrest, which was Steve Wynn who basically invented Las Vegas versus me. And I was like, this is rough. Uh, and his team of lawyers um, who arrested me on a charge of trespassing. So I went in front of the judge, and he's like, how do you plead? And I was like, I live in northern Kentucky. I was like, your honor, I just want to go back to Kentucky where things are normal. <laughs> anyway, I paid 200 bucks, and he let me leave. And it was 200 bucks out of like 100K. So I was like, here you go, guys. <laughs> I'm not a drug dealer. This is legal. Um, so, and here's the deal. Horseshoe, I've not been there. I really want to go there. I've worked the horseshoes across the country so badly that I have no doubt that as soon as I walk, because you're going to be like, hey, man, you want to go play with me? And I'm going to be like, yeah, but you're probably going to get arrested with me <laughs> as soon as we go in on trespassing. Um, yeah. Other thoughts, questions? Yes. So I haven't seen the documentary, but can you explain a little bit what Holy Rollers is? Yeah, Holy Rollers. Man, this is weird. Um, <laughs> So Holy Rollers, this is a documentary that was released a couple years ago. It was all shot on our team. We're based out of Seattle and Cincinnati. Um, to me, I have a really deep belief that the work of our hands and the values of our heart should be synchronized, right? Like you find fulfillment in your work when what you do with your hands matches the desire of your heart. And if what you do with your hands does not actually genuinely do that, it's laborious. It's drudgery. So for me, I was like, I know, I mean, I wasn't kidding. I'm like, I'm gonna, I wanna, my life is going to change the world. I don't know how, but I'm going to work in my city and do something with it. But we had to finance it. So <laughs> through my network of people within my church, we found out there's a couple smart dudes who know how to do blackjack. So we started getting networked and connected. Not quite like, a, like this event, but uh, yeah, we started getting networked. And our whole team was composed of Christians mainly like youth pastors and weirdos who are Starbucks baristas. And so these guys were like trying to start churches and we're like, hey man, we know a good way to fund it. Uh, <laughs> so we trained them in blackjack and card counting and this guy would like on Sunday would preach a sermon and on Thursday we'd put $150,000 in his pocket and fly him to Vegas. And so the documentary is essentially the story of 
how we started Holy Rollers, which is a team of all card counting Christians. If you watch it, there's a couple errors in there that are just super annoying. Like a dude gets kicked off the team because he's not a Christian. Not true. He sucked at blackjack. Uh, <laughs> that's why he, he lost a ton of money. I didn't want to hire him in the first place. But uh, yeah, the, the story is, is pretty weird. If you want to see me basically naked, there's that in there, which is, I didn't know that was going to be part of it. But uh, yeah, the documentary is just our story. And, and for me, um, and this really is important to me. I work with students. You know, we've trained a couple thousand students this year across Cincinnati. That message of what I do with my hands and what I do with my heart has to synchronize. So I was making really good money, barely working, playing blackjack. But at some point when we audit ourselves, we have to come to grips with, is this what I'm about? Right? When it, I always feel like I, I've, I've been writing this poem in my head. I haven't actually like, put it on paper yet. But I feel death's shadow on me all the time. We don't, we don't think like this, but we are actually moments away from dying. You will die, remember that? You actually will die. And it could happen now, and it could happen when you're 86. But invariably, that's the one constant thing that we know is coming. <laughs> and I think when we, when, we, when we think like that as a people, we really evaluate what in the heck are we doing and why are we doing it. And to me, there's a lot of wisdom in that. So my whole story with Holy Rollers was, I, was, I hit the point where I was like, man, I'm going to have to make a financial sacrifice. We have enough capital to run our new startup. But am I going to actually like withdraw? Am I going to stop suckling on this big money <laughs> vehicle and say, I'm done with it? I got to go and actually do what I know like, I'm supposed to do with my life. Um, so that's kind of my testimony for Blackjack and really why the heck I'm in Cincinnati and maybe here right now. I actually don't know why I'm here right now. I got invited last night. <laughs> um, Cool. You guys really want to know the worst thing I've ever done and never told anyone? Yes. I killed someone. Wow. I'm just kidding. I don't, I, I don't know. I tell that to students all the time. I'm like, that's how we do our icebreakers. It's like, what's the worst thing you've ever done and never told anyone? And this one girl actually answered. She said she peed in a pool, and it had that chemical that shows you if someone pees in the pool. And then she said she pulled her sister into the pee puddle, <laughs> and then she blamed it on her sister. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Cool. Kevin, that's all I have. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Awesome.